What do these four people all have in common? You might recognize some of them, you might not. Um, but what they do have in common um, is something pretty specific. All four of these men were all found guilty of committing voter fraud in the 2020 election. The gentleman in the upper left, he's a Republican from Nevada. His wife died several years ago. Uh, he nevertheless filled out her ballot and cast it in the presidential election. He then participated in efforts with the Nevada Republican Party to claim that his dead wife's ballot being cast in the election must mean there was mass voter fraud by Democrats. He is the one who cast his dead wife's ballot. He's a Republican. He got caught. He was sentenced to probation. That's the guy in the upper left. Guy in the upper right, uh, he's a Republican elected official from Ohio. In his case, it was his father who died, and he cast his dead father's ballot in the 2020 election. That Ohio Republican official was sentenced to a grand total of three days in jail. Uh, keep going clockwise. The gentleman on the lower right, he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, in his case, it was his mother who had died. He nevertheless cast her ballot for Donald Trump in the 2020 election. He was caught. He got probation. And then the last guy, lower left there, he's another Pennsylvania Republican whose mother also died. Apparently, he couldn't help himself. He cast a ballot in her name in the 2020 election. He got caught. He got probation. Now, this is Pamela Moses of Memphis, Tennessee. This week, Ms. Moses was also sentenced for a crime related to her efforts to vote in the 2020 election. Ms. Moses had a felony conviction in Tennessee um, that legally resulted in her not being allowed to vote again in that state. But she says that nobody ever told her that that particular conviction meant that she couldn't vote. And moreover, her county elections board never took her off the voter rolls. In 2019, when she discovered she had been declared ineligible to vote, she sought formally to have her voting rights restored. As part of her effort to do that, she went to the probation office and she asked them if she was off probation and eligible to have her voting rights restored. If so, could they please give her a certificate saying so, which she could submit with her voter registration application? Well, here's what happened next. This is uh, from reporter April Thompson at WREG-TV in Memphis, Tennessee. This application to have her voting rights restored was filled out for her and approved by the Department of Corrections officials on September 3, 2019. Staff from the Shelby County Election Commission even signed off on the application until this letter came dated September 4, 2019, a day later, saying, wait a minute, they were wrong. I relied on the election commission because those are the people who were supposed to know what you know you're supposed to do. See how crazy this is? The Department of Corrections signed off on her voting application. So did the County Election Commission. But apparently they screwed up and technically she wasn't eligible after all. But for submitting that certificate that they screwed up and trying to register to vote, Pamela Moses was arrested and charged and convicted and is now sentenced to six years in prison for illegally trying to register to vote. The judge in her case, I'm not kidding, said in court that Pamela Moses tricked the probation department into giving her the certificate saying she was eligible to vote. Oh, she tricked them. Which is she, she's a sorceress, maybe? What's the big difference between Pam Moses in Tennessee and all those other guys who actually cast illegal ballots in the name of relatives they definitely knew were dead? All of those guys got probation, in one case, three days in jail. She got six years in prison for trying to register to vote after she had received an official certificate from the probation, the probation department telling her it was okay if she registered to vote. Six years in prison is her sentence. Seriously. Joining us now is Janae Nelson. She is Associate Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. She will be taking over as president of LDF next month. Ms. Nelson, thank you for joining us tonight. I really appreciate you making time to be here. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. I am not a lawyer. Um, I am a person who reads a lot of news. Um, I am surprised that this is not um, a bigger story nationwide because this strikes me as bald-faced um, in its unfairness and outrageousness. And I'll just say that as my opinion. 
as an attorney, as somebody who knows things like this very, very well, uh, given your work at LDF, is there something here that I am missing? Is there some subtlety or some nuance or piece of this that makes this less outrageous than it seems? No, it is absolutely as outrageous as you describe it. It points to everything that is wrong in our democracy. It's a confluence of racial discrimination and voter suppression. And we have to ask the question, why do we have laws that prohibit people with felony convictions from voting in the first place? This case is emblematic of all the reasons that we need to do away with those arcane and draconian laws that ultimately disenfranchise 5.2 million Americans. And Black Americans in particular are disenfranchised at a rate of four times every other race combined. And what you just pointed out in terms of the individuals who are known to have committed voter fraud, blatant voter fraud, not because of misinformation, not because of a clerical or administrative error on the part of the state, as we've seen in so many cases like Mrs. Moses's, but people who intentionally committed voter fraud, they are sentenced to probation. And individuals like Mrs. Moses, like Crystal Mason out of Texas, whose case was similarly uh, uh, troublesome in this way, like Hervis Rogers, another uh, person out of Texas who was sentenced to prison because of a mistaken belief about his right to vote. It shows that there are two systems, there are two criminal justice systems, two sentencing systems when it comes to these issues. And you could not ask for a more, more stark contrast in about justice in our country. In the case of Mrs. Moses in Tennessee, um, she's a voting rights activist. Um, she has been um, an advocate for the African-American community. She's been a candidate for office. She's somebody who shows up at public meetings and is a, sort of a well-known public figure and activist um, in Memphis. I also took note of the fact that in this case, despite the facts of it, um, which as, as I just, as, we, as we've been talking about, the prosecutor in this case has been press releasing the heck out of this um, in terms of the prosecution itself, um, the revocation of her bond. So she was, she's actually been in jail. They held her, you know, through the holidays. She's been in jail since December, awaiting trial for this terrible, uh, awaiting sentencing for this terrible crime. Uh, and then when the six year sentence was handed down, the prosecutor has been crowing about this. Um, with, with press releases as if this is something that deserves national attention in a positive way. I, I wonder if there is some element of this that we should see, not just in terms of its strict legal consequences, but the way this fits into efforts to hype claims of voter fraud in order to justify the kinds of voter suppressive tactics that you were describing. Yes, I think there is an absolute campaign to drum up the idea and the notion that there are individuals out there who are attempting to vote intentionally when they don't have the right to vote. But if we look at the record of Amy uh, Weyer, she has a record that is riddled with allegations of misconduct. And if you look at the facts of this case and look closely at all of the evidence about the efforts that Mrs. Moses made to clarify her status and her ability to vote. There are many questions that I have about whether these are charges that should have been brought in the first place, whether this prosecution should have moved forward, and certainly whether the sentence she received is an appropriate one. Everything in this case smacks of overreach and an effort to make an example of someone. And as I said, we've seen this in many cases before, and you have individuals who, like, the, uh, the, the Tarrant County Justice of the Peace, Russ Casey out of Texas, who admitted to forging signatures to get on a primary ballot, and he received probation. You contrast that to individuals who are trying to exercise the fundamental right to vote, and we want to criminalize that effort. There's something very wrong with a democracy that seeks to excise people from the electorate, as opposed to welcoming them, welcoming them back, as opposed to giving people second chances and welcoming them into the electoral process.